Barry Middleton Sheffield Neve, DSO, OBE, MC, TD was a British soldier, lawyer and Member of Parliament from 1953 until his assassination in 1979. During World War II he was the first British prisoner of war to succeed in escaping from Offlog 4C at Colditz Castle, and later worked for MI9. After the war he served with the International Military Tribunal at the Nuremberg Trials. He later became Conservative MP for Abingdon. Neve was assassinated in a car bomb attack at the House of Commons. The Irish National Liberation Army claimed responsibility. Neve was the son of Sheffield Airy Neve CMG, OBE, an entomologist, who lived at Ingate Stone, Essex, and his wife Dorothy, the daughter of Arthur Thompson Middleton. His father was the grandson of Sheffield Neve, the third son of Sir Thomas Neve, second baronet. The family came to prominence as merchants in the West Indies during the 18th century and were raised to the baronetage during the life of Richard Neve, governor of the Bank of England. Neve spent his early years in Knightsbridge in London, before he moved to Beaconsfield. Neve was sent to Street. Ronan School. Worthing, and from there, in 1929, he went to Eton College. He went on to read jurisprudence at Merton College, Oxford. While at Eton, Neve composed a prize-winning essay in 1933 that examined the likely consequences of Adolf Hitler's rise to supreme power in Germany, and Neve predicted then that another widespread war would break out in Europe in the near future. Neve had earlier been on a visit to Germany, and he witnessed the Nazi-German methods of grasping political and military power. At Eton, Neve served in the school cadet corps as a cadet lance corporal, and received a territorial commission as a second lieutenant in the Oxfordshire and Buckinghamshire Light Infantry on December 11, 1935. When Neve went to Oxford University, he purchased and read the entire written works of the writer Karl von Clausewitz. When Neve was asked why, he answered, Since war is coming, it is only sensible to learn as much as possible about the art of waging it. During 1938, Neve completed his third-class degree. By his own admission, while at Oxford University, he did only the minimum amount of academic work that was required of him by his tutors. Neve transferred his territorial commission to the Royal Engineers on May 2, 1938 and following the outbreak of war he was mobilized. Sent to France in February 1940 with 1st Searchlight Regiment, Royal Artillery, he was wounded and captured by the Germans at Calais on May 23, 1940. He was imprisoned at Offlog 9AH near Spangenberg and in February 1941 moved to Stalock 20 near Thorn in German-occupied western Poland. Meanwhile, Neve's commission was transferred to the Royal Artillery on August 1, 1940. In April 1941 he escaped from Thorn with Norman Forbes. They were captured near Alo while trying to enter Soviet-controlled Poland and were briefly in the hands of the Gestapo. In May, they were both sent to Offlog 4C. Neve made his first attempt to escape from Kolditz on August 28, 1941 disguised as a German NCO. He did not get out of the castle as is hastily contrived. German uniform was rendered bright green under the prison searchlights. Together with Dutch officer Anthony Luton he made a second attempt on January 5, 1942, again in disguise. Better uniforms and escape route got them out. Of the prison and by train and on foot they traveled to Leipzig and Allmann finally reached the border to Switzerland near Zingen. Via France, Spain, and Gibraltar, Neve returned to England in April 1942. Neve was the first British officer to escape from Colditz Castle. On May 12, 1942, shortly after his return to England, he was decorated with the Military Cross. He was subsequently promoted to war substantive captain and to the permanent rank of captain on April 11, 1945. A temporary major at the war's end, he was appointed an MBE on August 30, 1945, and awarded the DSO on 18th of October. As a result, the earlier MBE appointment was cancelled on October 25, 1945. After his escape from the Germans, Neve was recruited as an intelligence officer for MI9, supporting underground escape organizations, such as the Pat O'Leary Line and Comet Line in occupied Europe. With equipment, agents, and money, assisting downed Allied airmen and other Allied military personnel evade and escape capture by the Germans. In Western Europe, about 5,000 British and American military personnel were rescued by the escape organizations and repatriated to the United Kingdom, mostly through neutral Spain, before D-Day. After D-Day and Operation Marathon, Neve journeyed to France and Belgium and, with help from the Comet Line and the Resistance, rescued more than 300 Allied airmen who had taken refuge in forest camps after being shot down. 
While at MI9, he was the immediate superior of Michael Bentine. He also served with the International Military Tribunal at the Nuremberg Trials, investigating Krupp. He was supported by the work of his secretary Joan Tut. As a well-known war hero, as well as a qualified lawyer who spoke fluent German, he was honored with the role of reading the indictments to the Nazi leaders on trial. He wrote several books about his war experiences including an account of the trials. A temporary lieutenant colonel by 1947, he was appointed an OBE in that year's birthday honors. He was awarded the Bronze Star by the U.S. government on July 23, 1948, and was promoted to lieutenant colonel on April 1, 1950. At the same time, his promotion to acting major was gazetted, with retroactive effect from April 16, 1948. He entered the reserves on September 21, 1951. Neve stood for the Conservative Party at the 1950 election in Thurrock and at Ealing North in 1951. He was elected for Abingdon in a by-election in June 1953, but his career was held back by a heart attack he suffered in 1959. He was a governor of Imperial College between 1963 and 1971 and was a member of the House of Commons Select Committee on Science and Technology between 1965 and 1970. He was on the governing body of Abingdon School from 1953 to 1979. Edward Heath, when Chief Whip, was alleged to have told Neve that after he suffered his heart attack his career was finished but in his 1998 autobiography, Heath strongly denied it or making such a remark. He admitted that in December 1974 Neve had told him to stand down for the good of the party. During the final two months of 1974, Neve had asked Keith Joseph, William Whitelaw and Edward Ducan to stand against Heath, and said that in the case of any of them challenging for the party leadership, he would be their campaign manager. When all three refused to stand, Neve agreed to be the campaign manager for Margaret Thatcher's attempt to become leader of the Conservative Party, that was eventually successful. When Thatcher was elected leader in February 1975, Neve was rewarded by becoming head of her private office. He was then appointed Shadow Secretary of State for Northern Ireland and, at the time of his death, was poised to attain the equivalent cabinet position in the event of the Conservatives winning the general election of 1979. In opposition, Neve was a strong supporter of Roy Mason, who had extended the policy of Ulsterization. Neve was author of the new and radical conservative policy of abandoning devolution in Northern Ireland if there was no early progress in that regard, and concentrating on local government reform instead. This integrationist policy was hastily abandoned by Humphrey Atkins, who became Secretary of State for Northern Ireland, the role Neve had shadowed. Politician Tony Benn records in his diary that a journalist from the New Statesman, Duncan Campbell, told him that he had received information two years previously, from an intelligence agent. That Neve had planned to have been assassinated if, following the election of Labour government, Labour leader James Callaghan resigned and there was a possibility that Ben might be elected in his place. Campbell said that the agent was ready to give his name and the new statesman was going to print the story. Ben, however, discounted the validity of the story, writing in his diary, no one will believe for a moment that Airy Neve would have done such a thing. The magazine printed the story on February 20, 1981, naming the agent as Lee Tracy. Tracy said he had met Neve, who asked him to join a team of intelligence and security specialists which would make sure Ben was stopped. A planned second meeting never took place because Neve was killed. Memorial plaque to Airy Neve at his alma mater, Merton College, Oxford Memorial stained glass window to Airy Neve in Friarning Parish Church, Essex Airy Neve was critically wounded on March 30, 1979 when a car bomb fitted with a tilt switch exploded under his Vauxhall Cavalier at 1458 as he drove out of the Palace of Westminster car park. He lost both legs in the explosion and died of his wounds at Westminster Hospital an hour after being rescued from the wrecked car. He was 63. The Irish National Liberation Army afterwards claimed responsibility for the assassination. Neve had been pressing within Conservative Party circles and in Parliament throughout the troubles for the British government to abandon its strategy of containment of Irish Republican paramilitarism within Northern Ireland. And switch to one of pursuing its military defeat. It is believed that this is what led to his being targeted. Following his death, Conservative leader Margaret Thatcher said of Neve, he was one of freedom's warriors. No one knew of the great man he was, except those nearest to him. He was staunch, brave, true, strong, but he was very gentle and kind and loyal. It's a rare combination of qualities. There's no one else who can quite fill them. I, and so many other people, 
Oh so much to him and now we must carry on for the things he fought for and not let the people who got him triumph. Labour Prime Minister James Callaghan said, no effort will be spared to bring the murderers to justice and to rid the United Kingdom of. The scourge of terrorism. The Inlet issued a statement regarding the murder in the August 1979 edition of the Starry Plow, in March. Retired terrorist and supporter of capital punishment, Ari Neve, got a taste of his own medicine when an Inlet unit pulled off the operation of the decade and blew him to bits inside the impregnable Palace of Westminster. The nauseous Margaret Thatcher sniveled on television that he was an incalculable loss, and so he was, to the British ruling class. Neve's death came two days after the vote of no confidence which brought down Callaghan's government and a few weeks before the general election, which brought about a conservative victory and saw Thatcher come to power as Prime Minister. Neve's wife Diana, whom he married on December 29, 1942, was subsequently elevated to the House of Lords as Baroness Area of Abingdon. Neve's biographer Paul Routledge met a member of the Irish Republican Socialist Party who was involved in the killing of Neve and who told Routledge that Neve would have been very successful at that job, Northern Ireland secretary. He would have brought the armed struggle to its knees. As a result of Neve's assassination the Inla was declared illegal across the whole of the United Kingdom on July 2, 1979. Neve was buried in the graveyard of Street. Margaret's Church at Hinton Waldrist, in Oxfordshire. In 2014, 35 years after Neve's death, it was reported that a fictionalized account of Neve's murder was to be used in a Channel 4 drama. The drama, Utopia, portrays Neve as a drinker who colluded with spies, and portrays his assassination as perpetrated by MI5. This led to condemnation of the broadcaster, with Norman Tebbett saying to attack a man like that who is dead and cannot defend himself is despicable. Neve was portrayed by Geoffrey Pounsett in Nuremberg, Dermot Crowley in Margaret, Nicholas Farrell in The Iron Lady and Tim McInerney in Utopia. Thanks for watching.